Hello and welcome to today's notes over solving multi-step equations. What does that mean? It means that it will require many steps in order to solve. So the first thing that you need to do whenever you're solving a multi-step equation is simplify the expressions on each side of the equal sign. So let's write that down here first. You must simplify the expression on each side of the equal sign, right? And that equal sign is what makes it an equation, but on each side of the equal sign, we have expressions. Now in today's notes, we're only gonna have a variable on one side of the equal sign, so we're only gonna need to simplify one side of the equal sign. How do we do this? Well, we're gonna use the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. So the distributive property, what do I do? I multiply. Then we're going to combine like terms. You can only combine them if they're alike. And then you solve. So let's get started. On number one, you can see I have a number butted up right next to the parentheses. I can simplify that. So what do I do? I distribute that two into each term on the inside of the parentheses. And when I do that, I get 2x plus 10 equals negative 18. And now I'm just back to where we were yesterday in that basic two-step equation. So again, if you need to draw your line down your equal sign, my variable is on the left side of this equal sign. The goal is to get it all by itself. So what do I do? I undo this addition first. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I get 2x equals same signs add and keep negative 28 now i've got two times x how do i undo that multiplication i divide what do i divide by well if my goal is to get x all by itself i'm going to divide by what i want to get rid of which is that two what i do to one side i have to do to the other negative 28 divided by 2 is negative 14. how can we check our work if i plug in negative 14 for x on this side of my equal sign and solve it, I'll get negative 18. That tells me I got the right answer. Number two is the same. This negative three, I need to distribute it on each, on, into each term on the inside of the parentheses. That gets rid of the parentheses. So when I do that, I get negative 15 times m minus 21 equals nine. Again, you can draw your line down your equal sign if you want. And now we're back to our two-step equation. What do I do? Add 21 to get rid of that. That cancels it on the left side. I'm left with negative 15 times m equals, what is nine plus 21? 30. And now what do I do? Divide by negative 15. Don't lose your negatives in this process. 30 divided by negative 15 is negative two. Awesome. Let's move on. Number three, what do you notice is different about this one? All of the stuff I need to simplify is on the right side. That's okay. The goal remains the same. Get this variable A all by itself. So I need to move everything else to the other side. Think of it that way. Okay, get it, get rid of it so that I can find the value of A. Okay, and there's a process and here's your process. So when you don't see anything in front of those parentheses, what can you put there? You can put a one. So what am I gonna distribute? A negative one, and I get negative six a plus seven equals negative five. And now what do I do? Undo the plus seven by subtracting seven from both sides. That gets rid of it over there. Negative six a equals negative 12. And now what do I do? Divide by negative six and I get A equals positive two. Moving right along, let's go on to number four. Uh-oh, we've got a fraction here. Okay, well, the first thing I need to do is to distribute. I'm gonna distribute this five into each term on the inside of the parentheses. So again, when you're multiplying fractions, five times X over five, that's like five over one times X over five. And you can simplify it just like that. Okay, and I end up with x. So 
if I ever have like a big number, a whole number, and I'm multiplying it by a fraction and that same number's in the denominator, they just cancel out just like that because of what I just showed you. So I end up with x plus 5 equals 16. One step equation, easy peasy, subtract 5, and I get x equals 11. In number five, we have a fraction right outside of our parentheses. I'm going to be distributing that fraction into each term on the inside of the parentheses. One half times any number is the same thing as taking that number and dividing by two, right? I'm just taking half of it. So half of eight is four. So that becomes four X. Half of negative five is negative 2.5 equals negative 6.5. Don't be afraid of those decimals. They're just numbers. So now goal remains the same. Get the variable all by itself. So what do I need to do? Add 2.5 to both sides. I'm going to line up my decimals here. 4x equals, I know I have different signs. I need to subtract them, right? Different signs, subtract, take the sign of the larger number, then you'll be exact. So 6.5 minus 2.5 is Four, and it's negative because the bigger number was negative. Divide by four, and what do we get? X equals negative one, moving right along. Okay, on number six. Now, what I really suggest doing, because a lot of students really struggle with this, is anytime you see plus a negative, rewrite it so there's only one sign in front of that number. So I'm just gonna rewrite three-fourths times eight X, when I see plus a negative, I'm going to rewrite it as just minus. So now I've got that 8x minus 4, and that, that's a little bit neater, if you will. So now I'm going to distribute this 3 fourths into each term on the inside with parentheses. And again, if you struggle with this, you can A, use your calculator, or B, review how to multiply fractions. So 3 fourths times 8 is the same thing as 3 fourths times 8 over 1, and I can simplify, um, I like to pre-simplify, 4 and 8 have common factors, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and I get 6 over 1. 3 fourths of 8 is 6, so that's 6x. Again, you can use your calculator, just make sure you plug it in correctly into your calculator. 3 fourths times negative 4, we're using the same process, 3 fourths of negative 4 is negative 3 or minus three, okay? And then what do I do? Oh, I didn't draw my line down. And you don't need to, it's, it just, it helps some students. Some students like it, some students don't. Use it if you like it. What do I do to get rid of minus three? I can add three. And I get six X equals, what's negative six plus three? Negative three. Then when I divide by six, wait a second, a lot of students don't really like to see this. It's just a fraction. Negative three over six is negative one half. You got a fraction, it's okay. If it's a fraction, leave it. If it's an improper fraction, leave it. It is okay in upper level math. Okay, moving on, number seven. So what do you notice that's different about number seven than all the problems that we just did? There's two sets of parentheses. You need to simplify everything on this side of the parentheses. I'm going to distribute this two into each term on the inside of the parentheses, and then I'm going to distribute this negative three to every term on the inside of these parentheses. So let's do that. 2y plus 18, then what? Minus 12y minus 6 equals negative 8. Okay, so now at this point, because I had these two sets of parentheses to distribute and get rid of, now I need to combine like terms. Okay, okay, like terms. I look at the variable first. I've got 2y and negative 12y. When we combine those, we're not multiplying anymore, we're combining. Okay, so what do I get? Negative 10y. Then I've got 18, I'm gonna put two lines under that, and negative six two lines under that, so I'm identifying like terms and I'm combining only the ones that are alike. So 18 minus six, what is that? Positive 12. 
And now we're back to where we just were. Basic two-step equation. Let's solve it. Undo this addition by subtracting 12. And I get negative 10y equals negative 20. And then what do I do? Divide by negative 10. And I get positive 2. Awesome. Moving right along. Let's go to number 8. Again, two sets of parentheses. Totally okay. We're going to multiply this negative 6 into each term in this set of parentheses. And then in the next term, what am I going to do to get rid of that? I can put a 1 there if nothing is there, and I can distribute that negative 1. So 1 equals, I'm going to draw my line, negative 6 times negative x over 2 is what? 3x, positive 3x, because a negative times a negative is positive. 6 times x over 2 is 3x. The negative 6 times negative 5 is positive 30. And then when I multiply a negative 1 into each of those terms, I get negative 1x minus 3. And you don't have to write that negative 1x, but I know I'm going to be combining, and it's easy for me to show you. So when I combine like terms at this point, I'm first going to identify the like terms, right? Same last name. So the like term with 3x is negative 1x. When I combine those, what do I get? 2x. What about the like term with 30? Negative 3. When I combine those, what do I get? Positive 27. And now what do I do? Subtract 27. And I get negative 26 equals 2x. And at this point, what am I going to do? Divide by 2. And what do I get? negative 13. I love equations. Okay, moving on. Last two. Number nine. Lots going on here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line down this equal sign. And what's our first step? What do we need to do? We need to simplify each side of the equal sign. In this case, I only need to simplify what's on the right side. I see parentheses. I got to get rid of them. How do I do that? distributive property. Distributing a negative 4 there, and I'm distributing a negative 3 there. So when I do that, what do I get? Negative 4y minus 20. What about here? What do I get? Negative 3y plus 6, and then there's that plus 9 on the end. Don't forget about that. It doesn't go away. It's a part of it. And now we're going to combine like terms. So that's our next step. Negative 4y, I can combine with negative 3y, and I get negative 7y. Then when I combine negative 20, positive 6, and positive 9, I like to combine in this way. What is 6 plus 9? It's 15, positive 15. Negative 20 and positive 15, it's easy for me to subtract those. Okay. Then going from negative 20 plus 6 plus 9, you can do that if you want. I just like to, if I can see groups of 5s and 5 and 10, I totally do go in that order. So negative 20 and positive 15 is negative 5. My goal is to get y all by itself. Add 5. Undo that subtraction. Negative 7y equals 35. And then what do I do? Divide by negative 7. Notice I am not, wait a second, yes, okay, we're right. I'm not losing my negatives here. So 35 divided by negative 7 is negative 5. Okay, moving along, number 10, last one. Oh my gosh, there's fractions. Don't get scared. You know your fraction rules, and if you absolutely need to, you can use a calculator. So we've got some parentheses. I need to use the distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. So I'm distributing a negative 4 into each term on, in this set of parentheses and a 1 third into each term in this set of parentheses. So negative 4 times 1 third x is negative 4 thirds x. And then negative 4 times 2 thirds is negative 8 thirds. Then 1 third times 2x is 2 thirds x. 
And then 1 third times negative 1 is negative 1 third. Oh my goodness, but don't let this scare you. They all have the same denominator. It's not hard to combine fractions when you have the same denominator. It's already done. You don't need to have... You don't need to create equivalent fractions that have a like denominator, which is what you have to do when you're adding and subtracting fractions. All of these denominators are already the same. So let's see here. There's a couple of ways that I can do this. This first way that I'm going to show you is I am going to just combine like terms like we normally would. So when I combine negative 4x and positive, I'm sorry, negative 4 thirds x, and positive 2 thirds x, I get negative 2 thirds x. And then when I combine negative 8 thirds and negative 1 third, I get negative 9 thirds, which, what is negative 9 thirds? It's negative 3. So minus 3 equals 9. Okay, so how do I get rid of or how do I get the variable all by itself? I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And I get negative 2 thirds x equals 12. And then how do I undo that fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I get x equals, what is 12 times negative 3 divided by 2? Negative 18. And then I'm going to show you the next way that you can solve this. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm showing you problem number 10 again, and I've erased everything except for this first step of where I distributed to get rid of the parentheses. And I want you to notice something. Every single denominator is 3. Okay, so a lot of students really don't like working with fractions. So here's a really easy method to get rid of these denominators. So when I have something like this, every single denominator is the same. Well, let's think about this. If I have one third, what could I multiply one third by that could get rid of that three? I can multiply it by a three. And now I'm just introducing you to this topic. There's other, it, it can expand upon this. But when I multiply one third times three, that gets rid of my denominator and I'm left with what's in my numerator. So what I can do is I can take everything on the left side of this equal sign and I can multiply every single term by three to get rid of all of those denominators. Pretty cool, right? But when I'm solving an equation, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. If you just follow that rule, you are never wrong. If what you do to one side, you do to the other side, you are never wrong. Your equation is balanced. So now if I do that, I'm going to distribute this 3 into each term on the inside of my parentheses. And what's really cool about that is the denominators just go away, and I'm left with what's in my numerator. So negative 4x minus 8 plus 2x minus 1 equals, don't forget to do the side over here. And now I'm going to switch colors up here, and I'm going to combine like terms. Negative 4x and positive 2x is negative 2x. Negative 8 and negative 1 is negative 9 equals 27. And now what do I do? I'm going to add 9 to both sides and I get negative 2x equals 36. And then I'm going to combine, I'm going to divide by negative 2 and I get x equals negative 18. Same thing, just a different way. And I hope this was helpful. It concludes your notes over solving multi-step equations.